what's up? Jimmy Brown from Guitar World here. Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome to another episode of A String Theory. Last time in I Got Rhythm Part 13, we analyzed that hypnotic cyclical rhythmic pattern featured in the Led Zeppelin classic Cashmere. Da da da, da da da, da da da, etc. And learned how to count it a couple of different ways. I then presented a few interesting spin off variations on the pattern that I came up with, which posed a fun challenge to be able to play and count while also tapping your foot on each beat. I'd now like to continue with this topic and present some additional similarly styled rhythmic patterns, which I think will serve as effective vehicles for mastering 16th note syncopations and grooves. But before we go any further, I'd like to first present what I think is a very helpful primer exercise or drill that surveys the four possible permutations of the three note da 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 motif as applied to 16th notes in 4-4 meter. And to also help us focus strictly on the rhythm here, we'll just use this one chord. It's just an open D5 with the pinky doubling the D note, the open D note, similar to what Paige used in Cashmere. 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a As you can see in bar 1, looking at the on screen tablature, we start off squarely on beat 1 and then repeat the same motif on beats 2, 3, and 4. With no shifting or metric displacement happening yet. As is the case when learning anything new, repetition really helps ingrain the information into your memory, right? So, regarding the pick hand, I recommend using what I call a 16th note pendulum strumming, as if your hand was a pendulum but turned sideways, maintaining a down up, down up motion across each beat, regardless of whether or not you're actually strumming. So you could be doing these silent Passover strums. Not to get confused with Passover, but you know, you're passing over the strings, okay? So looking at bar one, you'll see a staccato eighth note instead of a sixteenth note on each and count, for which I've used a plus sign in the notation to save space. That staccato eighth note eliminates the need for a sixteenth rest on the fourth sixteenth note, or uh, one e and uh. Remember, it's always best to economize your rhythmic notation where allowable and opt for a simpler rendering of the rhythm that requires fewer notational items. And moving on to bar two, we've shifted our da 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 motif ahead one sixteenth note. So that it begins on E, like one E, and uh, and then again we play it four times like this. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a Okay, so it's on the upbeats now. So again, it's four times, which is great because it helps pound the new rhythmic placement into our brains, right? You want repetition, that's how you get it. Likewise, in bar three, the motif shifts ahead another 16th note, starting on the and, like this, bar three. Three, four, one, e, and a two, e, and a three, e, and a four, e, and a. Okay? And finally, in bar four, we shifted ahead yet another 16th note. So we start on a uh. Uh, one e and uh, okay, like this. Three, four, one e and uh, two e and uh, three e and uh, four e and uh. Okay, very upbeat. Again, notice the economical notation with an eighth rest used in bar three, along with some more staccato eighth notes, and a consolidated dotted eighth rest on the downbeat of bar four, which takes the place of what would otherwise be three back to back sixteenth rests, which would look needlessly cluttered. A fun and worthwhile extra credit exercise here would be to play these four bars in reverse order, bar four, three, two, then one, so that the da-da-da motif now shifts back one sixteenth note on each bar, like this. One, two, three, four, one e a two e a three e a four e a one and a two e and a three and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and two e and three e and four. Or you can just toggle back and forth between any two bars. For example, let's string together bars one and four, like this. Three, four. Or we can string together, let's say, bars three and two. 
in that order. Three, four, one. <laughs> Good practice, right? Our next variation has you shifting the da 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 motif ahead 1 16th note on each successive beat, which is tricky to do and kind of a mind blower to keep track of the counting and tapping your foot, as it will take you five bars to complete the cycle in 4 4 meter to the point where the motif begins again on beat one. Here it is. One, two, three, E and a four, E and a four. See, that's how long it took to get back to one. It's kind of a crazy thing to do, but very good exercise for developing your rhythm and groove skills. If you recall, we actually did a similar thing back in I Got Rhythm Part 10 which was in the December 2020 issue of Guitar World, an installment of String Theory, where in that case we alternate picked steady 16th notes on the D string and hit the 12th fret D note every fifth pick stroke, starting with beat one, with four open Ds, and then that again. So that's really kind of crazy, and that went like this. One, two, Three E and a four E and a. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. We finally landed on one. It took five bars, okay? And uh, as I pointed out then, and I'll point out again now with our other riff, if you simply change the meter to 5-4 to add that extra beat, which would be beat one of the second bar, the pattern would only take one bar to cycle through, not five. Let's see, I'll demonstrate that. Going back to this riff. One, two, three, E and a, four, E and a, five, E and a. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a five e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a five e and a one. You're done. One bar five four. I played it a couple times just to kind of repeat it. Today's final example uses the backwards cashmere progression and standard tuned chord voicings from the previous lesson to create a twisted sounding variation on Page's seminal stomp riff that spans two bars of five four. Here it is. One. Two, three, four e and a five e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a five e and a four e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a five e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a five e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a five e and a one. So, is this original riff pattern of mine as catchy as the original riff in Cashmere? Hell no, but it's certainly an interesting and educational challenge to play and count. So have fun with it.